the, the name lobbying comes from the fact that these individuals, corporations, representatives were waiting in the lobby of the parliament, uh, of the House of Representatives, in order to wait for the legislators as they were coming in and try to present their demands uh, to them. So lobbying is a process by which uh, professionals try to influence the decisions taken by elected representatives on behalf of their paying clients. Typically it means this, it may also mean that these professionals get to learn about particular legislation or particular decisions before the general public does. And by doing that, they can alert their clients so that their clients can prepare uh, in anticipation of these decisions. In addition to being protected by the US Constitution, it is not unequivocal that lobbying is necessarily a, a bad thing. There is definitely a role for, for a good uh, type of lobbying a type of lobbying that informs elected representatives about things that they may need to know in order to draft good legislation. The fact that we are much more aware about lobbying practices in the US relative to other countries is in part a good uh, feature of the American process. In 1995, the US introduced what is one of the most advanced pieces of legislation in, in the world. This piece of legislation enforced the registration of every individual doing lobbying activities on behalf of a private client. And in addition to this registration, the lobbyists had to disclose the semi-annual revenues that uh, he or she was charging to his client. So that creates an enormous amount of transparency that makes it very easy for academics such as myself, but also for public watchdogs to track how much lobbying there is, who is doing the lobbying, who is receiving the lobbying on behalf of what corporations, on behalf of what interest groups, and so on and so forth. A large proportion of lobbyists have some type of background in the public sector. They used to be a congressmen or senators or, or perhaps they were staffers working in the personal offices of a, a congressman or a senator. Uh, and the question is, well, why is that the case? There are two views about this and these two views can also tell us something about what lobbying actually is. So the first view is that having government experience has allowed these individuals to accumulate out of expertise about particular issues that are important in legislation or the workings of the legislative process. This would be like the expertise view. The second view would be that it doesn't matter so much what you know, but instead who you know. That is, personal connections are important and individuals that have background in the public sector have used that background to accumulate a set of connections that they are using now, such that whenever they pick up the phone, somebody working in government responds uh, to that call. So what we do is try to evaluate the relative importance of these two views. If you are a staffer and what makes you valuable to your client is your knowledge, your experience, and so on and so forth, does not dramatically disappear when the congressman that you used to work for leaves office. Because you knew lots of things, you still know lots of things. Right? However, if it is personal connections that matter, that very important personal connection for you has suddenly evaporated. Therefore, if the personal connections view is the correct one, ex-staffers that are working in lobbying should suffer a big penalty in their lobbying revenues coinciding with the period in which their ex-bosses uh, leave office. So this is what we study and this is what we find. The importance of personal connections seems very large relative to the importance of government experience. There is a very large discontinuous drop in the lobbying revenue of these ex-staffers when their ex-bosses uh, leave office. The drop is around 50% in the first semester 
then it recovers a little bit, right? but it's a large uh, impact considering that a single person has left, albeit an important one. Th there is a view in political science that says that lobbying is less prevalent than the fundamentals of the US economy would lead us to expect. Lobbying revenues, registered lobbying revenues, are in the orders of the low billions, you know, on an annual level. This is a very small number okay, uh, in comparison to the size of the US economy. So small effects on the decisions that legislators take have huge implications uh, for corporations or, or interest groups. And as, as a result of this, what is surprising is not how much lobbying there is, but how little, at least registered lobby, there is. Lobbying revenues have been going down rather than up. And they have been going down coinciding with the reforms in 2007 and 2009 that were introduced you know, to make lobbying relatively less attractive. Now, this could be a coincidence, nobody really knows. But to the extent that this is a problem, it is a problem that is becoming less severe rather than more severe, at least according to what the data says.